All right, getting going on Twitch here in just a second. Give me a minute or two to get things ready to go. Got to make certain that everything is working first. It is Thursday. It is a quiet start to our evening. We do not have too much going on again for right now. But into the course of the next couple of days, it is possible that we are going to be seeing both some higher temperatures, again with the memes, uh, going to be seeing also the potential of some more in the way of wildfire danger as we see less rain or wildfire risk might be heading upwards. So stay tuned. We'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onig. This is Weather Overtime. We are live on YouTube and Twitch for tonight. Let me just double check the audio here on YouTube and everything is there. Being very sensitive about the audio at this point in time because last week tonight, I don't know how, I don't know why, but we had some sort of gremlin in the works and it was very difficult uh, to know. It, the audio signal that we used showed that we were working. Everything was where it needed to be. But when we checked out weather overtime afterwards, we found out that not only had we not gotten any audio signal whatsoever, uh, for most of it, we had like the final 10 seconds that actually gave us anything in the way of audio. So basically I did an entire uh, weather overtime for nothing and want to make certain that all of that is working before we go uh, too much farther for right now. Again, for the next several days, if you're taking a look at the forecast in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, that available at WDEF.com slash weather. Not much good news here as we see that potential for a lot more in the way of less rain and a lot more where heat is concerned. So not much good news going on at this point. If you got questions, drop them into the comments section. Again, this is your opportunity to ask uh, anything about weather in and around this area or otherwise. Again, we cover southeast Tennessee, north Georgia, northeast Alabama, and extreme western North Carolina. But if you're uh, from somewhere else, Wave hello, say where you're from in the chat function. We'd love to hear about where exactly it is you're checking in from. Uh, we've got chat running on YouTube and the stream chat running on Twitch if you'd like to see a little bit more about what's going on there. And again, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. If there's something on here as we go through stuff that you'd like to see, please let us know. We can't do this again without our viewers. So please let us know if you like something, if you don't like something. Uh, we'd love to be able to show you a little bit more about what's going on with weather. But if there's something on here that's not on here that you would like to see, let's hear about it. No problem there. Temperatures back in the high 80s today, one degree below normal for the high and three degrees below normal for the low temperature. That was very nice. We've been in the low 60s for the last couple of days. Again, the bad news at this time is down here in the precipitation section. We are goose eggs again today. We've had a fraction of an inch for the entire month, which means we need two and a half inches plus just to break even, just to get to where we should for this point in time today in Chattanooga. We need seven and a quarter inches to bring us up to normal in Chattanooga for the entire year. That's how far behind we are. And the lower this number gets, or the higher I should guess, I should say the higher this number gets, uh, the larger it gets, the worse we are going to see the potential for wildfires across the area. And we've already seen a lot of new wildfires popping up across a good section of the area. Uh, we'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned. More on the weather. Downtown beautiful. We should be looking at moonrise coming up here relatively soon in this general direction. Uh, from the Bailey's Heating and Air Camera on the uh, EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network. If you'd like to take a look around and see, again, what's going on uh, with the weather out there, these are always available on our website at WDEF.com slash weather. Looking back to the west, Lookout Mountain far enough over on the left-hand horizon and much hazier tonight from the Plainview Outdoor Advertising Camera at Highway 153 and Highway 64 back to the left-hand side. Chattanooga Airport, everything looks to be pretty good uh, for this evening. Let's take a look from downtown again from the News 12 studios on the Patriot Concrete camera. Looking back to the west, 
Hopefully going to get a good sunset time lapse out of this. Beautiful colors from earlier this evening from Chattanooga Red Wolf Stadium, 2475. A lot of construction going on, 24 westbound uh, through Germantown and more roads. If you have any plans for travel, that's someplace to keep an eye on. But for tonight, it's dark because all the lights have been turned off due to the construction with the power lines and everything else. So we are not seeing anything in the way of backups here for this evening. So uh, good news on that. Chattanooga Zoo webcam looking back to the northwest again. Hopefully a good sunset shot here. Erlinger Hospital off to the north and west. And the railroad tracks down to the south there running around the area underneath uh, 4th Avenue, 3rd or 4th Avenue, I can't remember which one it is, and from the Chattanooga Theater Center on the North Shore, looking back toward downtown, a lot of folks, looks like some park maintenance of some sort going on, and a few folks out and about on the footbridge, Tennessee River flowing through the area, and again, beautiful conditions for getting out and about. Temperatures on the warm side, we're back in the lower 80s, and numbers have been... Uh, Quite impressive over the last few days. Numbers back in the lower to mid 80s. Somebody should stop letting these gnats in. Uh, numbers continue to see uh, the potential for some higher, hotter conditions in the next several days. Numbers like this, quite comfortable. But in the next few days, oh, down to 79. Let's see, we just about arrived at uh, 10 o'clock. So the temperature's now in the 70s at the Chattanooga Airport where we just uh, showed that picture. Let's take a look at temperatures at the top of the hour and show you that across the area, 60s and 70s, uh, the number hasn't changed over yet at the Chattanooga Airport in the center of your screen, but we should be looking again at some very mild numbers into overnight. So not doing too bad again for right now. The best possibility for hotter weather will be coming up later on tonight. Uh, or later, later on next week, I should say. Tonight looks very nice. Dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the air, that's going higher as we get closer to the air temperature with the dew points. We start to see more moisture out there. The farther apart the air temperature and the dew points are, the drier it is. The closer they get together, the closer you are to a saturation point, and that is where we start seeing the more humid air taking place. And that's what we're feeling right now, but next few days we should see higher amounts of dew points. But if everything works, it won't be quite as bad as it was about a week or two ago where we saw mid to upper 70s in the dew points. Uh, portions of areas of Florida picked up dew points in the 80s, and that is just insufferable amounts of humidity. Now, we didn't get that high, but we should be looking at a little bit more in the way of humidity, and that could give us the potential of some fairly uncomfortable weather out there into the course of the next several days. So for right now, we do have a number of wildfires. The red dots are new wildfires being detected by the Veers satellite system. Some of these are prescribed burns. A good portion of these, according to state forestry websites, are uh, pres not prescribed but contained. So some good news there. But we also have a decent amount of smoke. The thickest smoke where we are uh, right about our area, we do have a thicker amount around the Great Lakes. Now, most of that is coming in from off the western United States. We're not seeing a lot of problems here with that. But as long as we have the potential for this area of high pressure sticking around, we will see the possibility of, again, anything in the way of precipitation not happening. High pressure doing a good job doing just what its name implies, pushing down to the surface and doing a very good job of keeping things nice and stable and keeping away from us anything in the way of showers and thunderstorms. Now, we did have a few thunderstorms northern Atlanta, Birmingham, south of Huntsville, down toward Montgomery. There were a few thunderstorms popping up. They didn't amount to much, but that was as close as any rainfall got to us. The closest amount of rain to us right now, Florida, Alabama coast, down toward Orange Beach, Pensacola, and some showers, some pretty good thunderstorms over parts of the Front Range and the High Plains of the Rockies into the Great Plains area tonight, and some rain off portions of the Great Lakes around Lake Superior. Beyond that, there's just really not that much happening. 
and high pressure is to blame for that. That's also going to keep things very quiet into the next several days. We will see the potential of a lot more heat coming our direction. Now, for tomorrow, not too bad in the morning, lower to mid-60s. Getting into Friday afternoon, back in the mid to upper 80s, toward Saturday morning, lower to mid-60s, so decently comfortable. And then going into the area of Saturday afternoon, probably right at to just below normal. Normal for this time of the year is about, give or take, 90 degrees, for Chattanooga at least. Then we go into Sunday, and that's where a lot of this heat, notice Saturday afternoon, uh, temperatures back down toward the Mississippi Delta, uh, around Jackson, Mississippi, Greenville, uh, back toward Little Rock, much of the Mid-South, showing temperatures in the high 90s to uh, the triple digits. Sunday morning, cool, but not as cool as it has been. And then Sunday afternoon, we're heading back upwards again into the lower to mid 90s. So we've got very warm conditions heading our way into the latter half of the weekend. Toward about Monday, there's that area of high pressure hovering over the east central United States. And then we get into Monday afternoon, high pressure basically right on top of the News 12 viewing area, again, right around Chattanooga. And that is where we see the temperatures remain much hotter, higher 90s to triple digits right back to our southwest. That's going to be affecting our weather right where we are. And that is going to get us uh, much on the hotter side. Now, what are we talking about when it comes to these temperatures? The general overall forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, the short-term forecast going into the last few days of August, showing that much hotter, much above normal temperatures for much of the southeastern United States. That is going to translate into hot conditions for everybody in and around this portion of the country. Uh, Lake Chickamauga on the Island Cove Marina and Resort camera, again on the EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network. We'll see numbers hovering right below normal Friday and Saturday. Above normal for Sunday, well above normal, but not record-breaking as we get into the end of the week. So we do have a bit of a slowdown on the temperatures. They rise, and then they park themselves in the high 90s record breaking at this time of the year would have to be in the triple digits that is where we would see again way off the charts type of heat and we don't seem to have that it, again for right now that really doesn't matter entirely too much because at a certain point hot is hot is hot but at least we won't have to worry about anything in the way of record breaking temperatures coming on through now, if everything works, according to the National Weather Service in Morristown, yes, it is going to be getting hotter, but we are, thanks to high pressure, keeping things stable, dry, again, hardly seeing anything in the way of clouds here, just sunshine. After this forecast, yes, some chances of thunderstorms towards next weekend as we head into the first uh, weekend of uh, early September. Well, let's see, there's one more weekend after that, so... Uh, anything around there, that's where we could see some showers and thunderstorms next weekend. That area of high pressure that's keeping us dry and hot uh, is not going to be giving us anything in the way of major amounts of moisture coming in from off the Atlantic or the Gulf. So, yes, we will see higher dew points, but not as maxed out high as they were a couple of weeks ago where we saw dew points in the high 70s. Again, that is exceptionally sultry conditions. So, it's going to be hot, but hopefully it won't be quite as almost deadly hot as it can be. Good possibility of heat index numbers here coming close to 105. That's where the National Weather Service starts issuing those heat advisories for the area. 105 to 110, that's where we may start seeing excessive heat warnings if we get enough in the way of moisture here. So we're going to watch to see what goes on there. Now, I want to talk about this for a second. This graphic is incomplete because, unfortunately, due to some gremlins, I didn't have a chance to get all of this taken care of. So uh, from Hamilton County, from the Hamilton County Chattanooga Air Pollution Control Board, no burning is allowed in Hamilton County from May 1st through September 30th, commercial or residential allowed in Hamilton County. Now, we go out from Hamilton County, Tennessee, and take a look around the rest of the area. 
and I'm talking, again, statewide burn bans can be in effect in certain states at certain times. What I'm focusing on here with this graphic is a county-by-county county burn ban basis to where local government will issue a burn ban and say, no burning until the situation improves. Well, as of right now, in North Carolina, the News 12 viewing area here, Southeast Tennessee, Western North Carolina, Alabama, the northeast part of the state, and also, again, from these areas, there are no county-by-county county burn bans in effect. Tennessee, the websites located on the lower section here, Tennessee, burnsafetn.org, Alabama, forestry.alabama.gov, North Carolina, www.ncforestservice.gov, and then there's Georgia, EPD, Dot Georgia dot gov. That's Echo Papa Delta EPD dot Georgia dot gov. There is an open burn ban from May 1st to September 30th, and that does include 54 counties in Georgia. Now, there should be a lot more counties filled in here. I'm working on that, but here's what I want to show you direct from the website itself. There are certain types of burn allowed in some areas. Uh, again, the listing of everything, the burn types over here on their website. Now, burn types 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, and 12 are allowed uh, in the green areas. Ju News 12 viewing area here, northwest Georgia, Chattanooga located right up here. We do see some burning loud, according to the latest information here, and that was updated. Okay, that was a long, long time ago. So hopefully we'll get a uh, new update at some point in time because they are not updating this the way I thought that they were. So for right now, there's no apparently uh, active burning going on at this time, uh, but certain counties are allowed in that burn section. So something to take a look at there. Again, uh, double checking on this. Uh, for right now, this is a little concerning that this uh, has not been updated in approximately five years. Uh, but the other website was putting this down as uh, very current. So for right now, again, the basic bottom line is this, that if you have anything outdoors to burn, yard waste, uh, grass clippings, things like that, the best thing you can possibly do for right now is just not burn anything because as it does get drier, these fires, and especially the embers of those fires, can go out of control very, very quickly. So again, this is not the best time to burn anything. The best thing to do, uh, if you have anything involving fire or flame outside, again, burn like barbecue pits. If you're gonna be doing some roasting out there, uh, backyard barbecue type situation, again, you're gonna have to be very, very careful, but anything involving burning waste or anything involving environmental stuff like grass clippings, leaves, dried out weeds, whatever you collect. Not the best time to do stuff like that, but for right now, no active county by county burn bans are in effect for any part of the News 12 viewing area. So that in and of itself is good news. But uh, what we do have is this increasingly dry situation. And that is where we're going to be noticing a lot more, I think in the next few days, a better possibility of something involving uh, burn bans, active burn bans by county, and then also maybe some red flag fire alerts from the National Weather Service. That could be a distinct possibility in the next several days as we see again the potential for the heat going up and into the next few days as well. We're going to be looking for the potential of more wildfire smoke from more wildfires. So if you have anything outdoors that you would like to burn, again, yard waste, et cetera, now's not the best time to be doing that, especially with conditions as dry as they are and continuing to get drier. So that is something to try to avoid. Again, the best thing you can do is go to your local forestry website, check in with your local fire department or your local fire marshal and ask them what the current situation is. This is something that really needs to be adhered to because all it takes is one stray spark under dry vegetative conditions to really start putting together a big wildfire. So please use a lot of caution and common sense. 
smokers, keep the cigarette butts in the car or the truck. Do not toss a lit cigarette butt out the window because one lit cigarette butt could be responsible for a lot of damage and maybe a threat to life and limb. So please, again, this is going to be a big thing that we're going to be talking about for the next several days until we get some decent rain in here. And for right now, that just does not appear to be happening. Better potential of rainfall down toward the south and east. Less potential right where it is not needed over the plains, the Rockies, the high plains, the upper Midwest. That is where we could be seeing the potential for even more wildfires breaking out. So that in and of itself is really cause uh, for concern out there. Add to that, it could be a bit of a problem for our air quality. Even at about 10 o'clock Eastern, we've got a moderate air quality, thanks again to high pressure pushing down and keeping that smoke down toward the surface. So that is where we start to see again uh, the potential for more problems out there in regards to how bad the air quality is going to get. Uh, keep it tuned to News 12, and we'll keep you updated on all of this. All right, I want to take a look first at the Pacific, because as of right now, this is really incredible to see this much going on, uh, and very quickly over the last several days. We have had a couple of areas like this disturbance right underneath the National Hurricane Center's forecast oval for this particular disturbance. That's the clouds from the disturbance right there going over an area where Hurricane Major Category 3 Hurricane Gilma is now making its way across the eastern Pacific, heading generally to the west. Then we have Tropical Storm Hane. That in, and there's Hawaii right there. This system expected again for right now to basically remain the same for the time being. But as of the next couple of days, it is possible that we could see uh, an increase in where this storm is going, uh, increasing possibility for Hone. Again, it's a, uh, a minimal tropical storm for right now, expected to stay that way as it passes Hawaii. But as this swirls around, this could bring in a lot of rain and a lot of wind to the Hawaiian Islands, which means if you're heading to Hawaii for a late summer vacation, Maybe not the best time to go, maybe time to think about an indoor vacation someplace because this could bring a lot of foul weather to a good portion of the Hawaiian island chain. Gilma also, so far this does not look to be a major concern for the time being, but this will be heading in the general direction of Hawaii and more potential of this storm uh, weakening to a tropical storm over time but this also could aim close to Hawaii and drop a bunch of rain and wind. And for the disturbance, well, for right now, it's a, about a, uh, let's see, where is that going to? 80% uh, chance in the next several days, 60% for tonight in the next week, 80% possibility of development. So that could be another problem for a good portion of the Hawaiian Islands and the Central Pacific. So watching that with a lot of interest. All right, now that being said, taking a look out into, that's not the right graphic, pardon me, that's old leftover Ernesto type stuff. Matter of fact, give me just a second here, I'm gonna park Ernesto uh, out over and get that out of my lineup so I'm not using that anymore. And here we go, with the Atlantic, over the next things like this happen, I'm cameraman, audio director, host, uh, things like this happen at various points in time. Now, from the National Hurricane Center, uh, over the next several days, nothing is expected to happen. The Gulf, the Caribbean, the bulk of the Atlantic, nothing is going on at this time. Part of that is due to some cooler waters off of the equatorial regions. Part of that is due to a lot of dust and sand moving off of the Sahara and another stronger belch making its way here. This dust, that, this is completely and totally normal. This is not conspiracy theory. Uh, Africa sending a lot of dust uh, and sand our direction. This is fertilizer for the tropical rainforests, but it also, as it sits in the atmosphere, it can deflect sunlight and cast shadows letting not quite so much sunlight make its way down to the surface of the waters and keep things a little cooler. 
which means that it is inhibiting tropical storm development. And the stronger this dust becomes, the less we may see in the way of any development over the next several days. Hopefully that happens, but remember that barrel, hurricane barrel formed in a pocket just like this a few weeks ago. We are not even at the peak of hurricane season. We are coming close, but we're not quite there yet. So we still have the rest of the season to go through. Uh, we will continue to monitor this. Again, for right now, there's nothing uh, incredible developing just yet, but in the next several days, the National Hurricane Center, the Climate Prediction Center are all pointing to the central and basically the southwestern Atlantic for developing in the northern hemisphere, developing more storms more quickly. So that is something that we are really going to watch. And if you're heading, again, anywhere near an ocean, a beach, an eastern seaboard, the Keys, the Bahamas, the Gulf, the Caribbean, you need to watch what is going on very carefully. It's usually called keeping a weather eye out, uh, as the saying goes. But if you're heading into an area where a storm is moving towards, you do not want to be going to that area where everybody else is going to try to be getting out of the way of that storm. So that's why you need to really pay attention to what's going on with the weather situation. So again, please keep it tuned to News 12, and we'll keep you updated on that. All right, that is pretty much the worst of the weather for right now. We've been talking a lot about the environment over the last couple of days, and we've been talking about this specifically, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or gyre as it is called. This is something that, again, where shows we need to take care of our planet. We all can pitch in and help out and figure out ways of reducing waste processing waste, reducing the waste we are going to use once in the first place, single-use plastic, we are drowning in it, and a lot of it winds up in the ocean due to animals, due to wind, due to neglect, due to storms, due to a lot of various reasons. There's a lot of groups out there trying to help clean up, and that's great, but we need to cut off the problem at the source and that's where we again have the problem. So the area of the Pacific between Hawaii and the United States where all this garbage is circling around, how big is it? The size of the state of Connecticut, three times the size of France, half the size of Kansas, and about as big as the island of Tasmania. Well, the lower ratings, 6% uh, each for half of Kansas and Tasmania, Tie vote, 44% for the size of Connecticut or three times the size of France. Well, the actual answer is three times the size of the country of France or, give or take, about twice the size of Texas. That includes a whole bunch of stuff. That includes ghost nets. That includes plastic waste. That includes a ton of microplastics, as in weighing the size of several jumbo jets worth of microplastic floating around in the ocean, that microplastics is getting into you and me. It's getting into the air. It's getting into the water. It's getting into the food. It's difficult to say what's going to happen to our bodies as we continue to absorb that much plastic. Think about it for just a second. You eat a credit card's worth of plastic every single year. That is not good for your body. It certainly is not good as the blood flow takes up that blood into around the brain or the rest of your body. And there are signs that it is doing a lot of damage to humans in general. I don't have time on here to list everything tonight. You can do the research on that, but they are out there. One I just saw is it is, appears to be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from the New York Times or from JAMA or the CJC or uh, CDC, uh, apparently, it is affecting male fertility, as in reducing it, not increasing it. So that also is something, again, uh, to really be concerned with there. So for tonight, thanks to friendandroofing.com for our weather poll, science poll, climate poll, whatever it is of the day. And make certain you go to friendandroofing.com uh, for more information about how you can protect your home uh, with a roof fix there. That should just about do it for tonight. Hold on, let me just do one more thing. Uh, I do have to say thank you to our now former weather intern. He was here during the summer. He is now back at uh, going back to class for the fall semester. Thank you very much, uh, News 12 weather intern Spencer Holt from the Chattanooga area for a beautiful view a couple of Thursdays ago. 
of looking from the News 12 parking lot across the street toward Lookout Mountain, the 7-Eleven, and a beautiful sunset with a few clouds again about two weeks ago tonight. So thank you, Mr. Spencer. Good luck in your studies. It was great getting to know you. Uh, again, stop by to say hi again at some point in time, and thanks for volunteering to be our weather intern for summer 2024. Looking forward to how your career unfolds in the future. If you've got weather pictures to share, please send them in to us, pictures at WDEF.com. You can also let us know a little bit more about what's going on uh, through our social media pages or our website at WDEF.com slash photos where you can drop your pictures off and see what other people have been submitting for the Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. So if you've got pictures, please send them in. We'd love to show them, but we can't do that unless you send them in to us. So please get those into us as soon as possible. All right, into tomorrow morning for the kids at the bus stop. It is going to be dry in the afternoon and warm. Maybe an extra bottle of water for the trip home would not be a bad idea. And then in the morning, brisk but not as chilly as it has been, very much on the mild side. Thank you, News 12 sponsor TN Stars for uh, being our sponsor for this. If there's a website on here, if there's a page on here that you as a business would like to sponsor or would like to suggest sponsoring anything on our website page or anything else, uh, call our sales team here at News 12. You can reach them through our website at WDEF.com and find out more about sponsoring uh, one of our weather uh, pages. A good opportunity to get your name out there, but you can't do it unless you uh, start calling us. So give us a shout. Again, WDEF.com and find out more from our sales staff about how our sponsorship system works and how you can get on board with that. All right, think that should do it. We've been on for just about a half an hour now. No comments uh, from Twitch tonight. Uh, thanks to everybody from YouTube from checking in. We had a few viewers tonight, so not many, but uh, nice to see <coughs> Excuse me. some folks on board and keeping an eye on things. Want to have anything in the way of questions? All you have to do is let me know. Again, aonic at wdef.com. You can reach any of our staff down, including our news director or our general, general manager at wdef.com slash weather. Chip Chapman will have your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning. And, of course, I'll have more on weather overtime for Friday. And we'll keep an eye on the dry situations, updating you on what's going on uh, with the wildfire threat, which is going to be increasing over the next several days. So time to be weather aware and keep an eye on what's going on with fire or any flame outside. That'll do it for Thursday. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again coming up on Friday evening.